Alrighty, folks, it's Dr. here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 40th Anniversary Edition. And here we are in the spirit of St. Louis. Transatlantic flight. Um, I'm just enjoying some views here. And I assume you've seen the first two parts. I'm just jumping in with the third. No need to give the same introduction every time. So we left off leaving Boston and Cape Cod and entering the Atlantic Ocean. And I made a huge mistake and said it was all open ocean for the rest of the way to Europe. And of course, I was very wrong and I am super embarrassed because I completely forgot about Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And I'm embarrassed because my world geography is really good and Canada is my neighbor. <laughs> So I apologize for about forgetting about our Canadian neighbors. I can't believe it. Um, let me explain what's going on and what I've been doing for the past couple hours. I've been watching YouTube videos while I fly. And it's been super easy to fly over the water. I've dipped down to about 535 feet or so just because. It said he went down to 10 feet. But I'm not going to go lower than 500. In fact, we're going to start climbing now very slowly. Um, simply by using the trim wheel. And we're going to enter Nova Scotia soon. And then after that is Cape Brenton. And then after that is Newfoundland. And then it's open water to Ireland. So this video will be Newfoundland, or Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. Um, edited down to one video. And then part four will be the open water. Edited down to one video and so on. So, anywho, let's see here. It's been really simple just to do this. In fact, now that I'm talking, I'm off course, but I was holding 74 degrees perfectly for like an hour here um, before I started recording again. So let's get back to 74. So all I had to do was just you know, watch YouTube video and just tap the yoke left and right every once in a while to get to 74 degrees and stay there. And then adjust my trim wheel to keep us about 500 um, feet above sea level, which like I said, we're not going down to 10 feet like he did. And we'll read about that in the navlog in a moment. In fact, I'm going to start climbing now. You can see my trim is up 23%. So now we'll start climbing ever so slowly because there are mountains in Nova Scotia and Newfoundland as in the Navlog. So, I'm at 74 degrees, but you see there's a crosswind coming from the right because the nose always points into the wind when there's a crosswind, which means we're getting blown to the left even though I'm going 74 degrees. So, had there been no such thing as wind, we would be skirting the very south east coast of Nova Scotia but because of the wind we're going to probably go over about the middle and that I believe is the intention of this flight and we'll read about why in a minute so oh, we're climbing a little too much at once here oh uh, let's see I'm tapping my yoke you can hear my finger now tap on my yoke to get this back to 74 degrees there we go so um let me hop inside and let's pull up the VFR map for just a moment here so we're flying right over here right now, and we're coming up on Nova Scotia. So without the wind, we'd be skirting the coast here. But with the wind, we should be going pretty much right over the middle. And then we'll just fly over this for a couple hours, in which, whoop, we're turning too much, which I'll condense. And then here is Cape of Benton Island here. And then more water, and then Newfoundland. And then open water to Ireland. So, um... This video will be all of this stuff. Many, many hours of flying, but condensed into one video. And I'm completely going off track, because I'm jib-jabbering around. Let's get back on track. I promise you, it was perfectly fine before I started talking. <laughs> and we're really slowing down, because I was bumping the yoke. All right, we don't need to go much higher than 2,000 feet, though. So let's start calming down again while we get back on course. And then we'll read the nav log. But first, let's use the... Um, drone since we can so since it's so calm so back there's boston cape cod well beyond the horizon and then canada well beyond the horizon and nova scotia is coming up you can't see it with the drone view but if you use the periscope you kind of can so that's very interesting i find that interesting how that gets thrown around all righty let's get back to 78 here um and back to 2000 feet or 74, I mean, sorry. Let's get back to 74 and 2,000 feet. 
there we go um, just because it's coming up soon so I am just completely not paying attention now that I started talking I promise you I was watching YouTube and talking with my family and stuff yet keeping it on 74 degrees for like an hour <laughs> But now that I'm talking, it's totally different. So let's get back on track, and then we'll read the nav log, and then we'll just have some sightseeing until we reach land. Because we're still about half an hour from land, I think. But I didn't want to skip anything on the way there. Okay, so there's going to be 74 by the time we roll out. Okay, so there we go. Hopping inside. Let's see what the nav log has to say. We are... Um, let's close this up. Even though it's going to go away. Here we go. 10.52 a.m. Um, we're actually way ahead of this. We're between 3 and 4, right? So, 10.52, yeah, we're just only 9, what is that, 9, you can't see that far away, 9.36 or something. So that's kind of weird that we're so far ahead. Whatever. Um, let's see here, so 10.52 a.m., if you haven't already, bring in the periscope. Why? I like looking out at the open water. <laughs> bring in the periscope. As Lindbergh did at this point. What am I doing here? Careful with the trim. There haven't been any ships for miles. I guess we can bring in the periscope just because he did, right? Just for now. Lindbergh noted he started to feel tired at this point, so he flew 10 feet above the water, clears mine. Well, we flew 500 feet above the water, which I think is plenty good compromise. Much safer that way, especially because if I had to quit and come back. When I restart a flight, I don't know exactly where it's going to put us exactly. Plus, we need time to readjust everything once we start, re you know, continuing a flight like this without, like, landing. So I don't want to be that close to the ground ever. I never want to be closer than a 1,000 feet um, if we're going to stop and start again. And the next waypoint, when we see land ahead, we will change this clock. 1152 maybe or maybe we'll just leave and see how far ahead we get we'll see land ahead striking land in nova scotia gave limber confidence and stability to navigate over the open ocean as it will for you too no doubt so as i already said in my rambling i believe without wind we would have arrived along the southeastern edge but because of wind we're going to go over the middle of it which i believe is intentional like i said so we're at 2000 feet we're going to stay here now and we're going to continue on course at 74 degrees until we reach land. Once we reach land ahead, where is that one? Then we'll go to 77 degrees. Okie dokie. And that'll um, give us some mountain ranges and then keep Brandon. So when we reach land, it's going to take one, two, three, four hours of crossing Nova Scotia. And then um, heading towards Newfoundland. So, we've got, what, four, five, six, six hours of flying to condense into this one video. So, right now, I'm going to stay on course, 74 degrees. I believe it still is. Yep, still 74 degrees until we reach land. I'm going to keep screwing around with that and give you some sightseeing. And you'll hear my voice again once we hit Nova Scotia. I'm going to stay at 2,000 feet, though, as best as I can, just because... um. I don't want to run into the water when I quit to come back later. But you won't know because of editing. But I'll see you in a little bit.
All right, just an update. I let us ourselves uh, let us come back down ourselves come back down to 500 feet again because it's just much more interesting. Um, I don't see land yet. I've been going for an hour and nine minutes, so I'm thinking. Looking at the nav log, it's two hours if we add the two together before we get land ahead. Um, because sometimes they're talking about this at the end of the time. Sometimes maybe at the beginning, probably at the end. So that would be two hours. So another hour to go. Whoops, another hour to go before I um, see land probably. So. We'll see how that goes. I just want to let you know that I'm getting really close to the ground because it looks really neat. I just have to be really careful because it can sneak up on you in a hurry. Um, well, as I'm just, you know, keeping track of the water and the altitude so we don't smash into the ground. And looking for land. Um, it's out there somewhere. I've been staying between 71 and 74 degrees, so we should be set up. Like I said earlier, which for you was like a couple minutes ago, but for me it was like hours ago. We should be set up to go across. Oh, zoom out, please. Across the middle, yeah. Across the middle of Nova Scotia. Uh, in fact, every time I reload the map, it's putting us further north. So maybe we're going to end up on the northern part of Nova Scotia, which we don't want to because the mountains. Once we reach Nova Scotia, though, I will put us along the coast of all of Nova Scotia and then all of Newfoundland. That's the plan. Um, but anyway, that's my little update. Um, just flying low and aiming for the middle of Nova Scotia. See you again in a blip for you, but a couple of days real life for me. The time is 11.59 a.m. Do you know where your children are? Those of you who are my age will get that reference for sure. But the reason why I point out the time is being noon, because we have land ahead. There is Nova Scotia. Here's the caveat, though. We were way ahead of schedule. Now we're behind schedule, because we're supposed to be hitting that land eight minutes ago. Um, so you might say eight minutes is no big deal, but it's going to take lot longer to get there which is going to put us about half an hour behind or 45 minutes behind which again makes me worry about fuel um i basically figured the way i'm going to relax about the fuel is when we leave um newfoundland if we're below 70 percent we're going to have to refuel with my command so that we're not too heavy at the end because Leaving Newfoundland is only about a third of the way there, so we want to make sure that um, our fuel is, says that as well because we don't want to refuel. Like I said, probably a minute ago in the video, but like a day ago for me, I'm sure I said I don't want to refuel at the end if I have to because it won't be too heavy to land. So anyway, things I've been doing to kill time other than watching YouTube videos is, oh, and I can see land without looking through the periscope. Yeah, looking out this window because we were we drifted really far north and I was able to see these mountains we can't now because I corrected but I was watching mountains the entire past couple hours so that tells me we had actually drifted up here somehow which is also why we're behind on schedule so I kept my heading correct but the wind blew us way up here so we're correcting for that now that's why I'm at 7982 basically so based on the periscope just before you record, I was able to make this out in the land skip to here. So we're probably up here right now. Um, so I'm going to correct us so we hit lower. It'd be cool if we crossed at that airport, but I think we're going to be north. So then we're just going to fly until we hit the southern shore and then follow that all the way through for the next many hours beyond Newfoundland. And then we'll do a fuel check right here. Um, and that'll be the end of this part of or this video, part three, I think this is. And then part four will be on the way to Ireland. But again, a couple days, maybe even a week or so of my recording condensed into this video. So I don't want to get a far ahead of myself yet. So um, what does he say? Land ahead, he says. Land ahead is Nova Scotia. Striking land in Nova Scotia. Even the confidence and his ability to navigate over open ocean as it will for you too, no doubt. 
I wasn't worried about it because we were in the general vicinity. Oops, now we're drifted south yet. Um, we're more east. We're in the general vicinity. I wasn't worried about missing Nova Scotia. I just didn't realize the wind would blow us that far north. Even I'd stay on course the entire time. So, with mostly. But then again, remember, if you're one degree off, in fact, this will be something you can Google, because I've said this many times. If you're one degree off, and you go for 60 minutes, 60 minutes, how many miles away are you going to be from your intended destination? So, for example, let's say we're supposed to hold 78 degrees, but I do 77 degrees for an hour. How far north or how far east northeast are we going to be from our intended destination? You can Google that. It's a real thing and it's quite some distance. And um, I'll just give you a hint. Two or three degrees off, we would have gone way north of Nova Scotia. So you got to be careful about stuff like that, especially over this distance. Um, we're hovering around 1,000 feet just so that when I restart the lake another day, I don't end up in the water. Because it would be a huge bummer to crash and have to start over at this point. So anyway, there is land up ahead. It's time to open the periscope again so we can view that nice land. See, there you go. There's a part sticking out and there is the mainland. So we're just going to keep going like this for a while and then you'll see me again once we hit the shore of Nova Scotia. I can't wait. Here we go. Oh, one more thing. Sorry to cut in on the sightseeing. One more thing. Remember this clock thing? And I'm like, how can we be off so much? Well, I realized whenever I restart the activity or continue the activity, this restarts at 8.30 something. That's why it's always off. So every time I restart, this thing is all messed up. So anyway, just want to throw that in for you just so you could understand what was going on when I figured it out. And I'm just going to navigate and see a... Brenton. Keep Brenton unless something interesting happens in between. Okay, I'm interrupting your sightseeing again because I learned something. We're in drone mode and I am controlling my airplane. So for over two years now, I've said I cannot do sightseeing without autopilot because I cannot control my plane in drone mode. But that's not true anymore. I accidentally figured out how to do it. And I cannot believe in my hundreds of videos and thousands of comments, no one has corrected me or told me how to do it. All you do is hit C to change between camera control and airplane control. So for example, I'm going to go into this view. Now we're in drone mode. Now I'm controlling my drone. 
I cannot control my airplane at all, right? Let's reset the drone though. And now let's hit C, and now I'm controlling the airplane. I hit C again, now I'm not controlling the airplane, I'm controlling my drone instead. And then hit C again, and now I'm controlling my airplane. So now that I accidentally figured that out, I completely remember that now from early on in the sim, like from two years ago. I remember now. <laughs> No, but it, it escaped me for some reason, and no one had ever had ever corrected me. Um, but anyway, so now we're, we move the drone over, now we're back to controlling the aircraft. You can see the ocean on the west coast there. And see the chains around here. There's the northern coast. And then let's go back to here, because this is cool. Hit C, I control my airplane again. So a few things. Um, since I interrupted your sightseeing, this water ahead is not the ocean. This water ahead, if we go here, I don't know if you can pull up this map in drone mode, but whatever. Um, this water you see is this right here. So we're heading across here to get to the coast, and then we'll follow the coast. Um, that'll be pretty obvious when we're at the coast, because you'll see sightseeing of land out the left and water out the right. That's pretty obvious. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I'm going to climb even more because if I'm below 2,700 feet or yeah, 27 to 3,000, the wind and turbulence is so insane. I just can't stand it and makes me nauseous and we're all over the place. So I'm going to climb, just going to keep climbing for a while here until it smooths out, which it looks like it actually got a lot smoother just in the past 600 feet. So we're going to stay around this altitude. Um, because it's just too nauseating to be close to the ground. So anyway, there's your update. Um, see you in a little bit here, I guess.
All right, we're coming up on Cape Breton Island, which is this island right here. We've been, um, I'll hop straight outside here. Actually, let's use the drone now that I can. Uh, let's do this and then boom. So we've been, until right now, until I started recording, I was actually out over the water because there's no turbulence. I could let the plane fly straight, perfectly trimmed for like 20 minutes at a time without even touching anything. But now we've, um, come up over some land a little bit so i was flying over here coming up over some land because we're gonna kind of mosey on over to cape breton island we'll just see the edge of it and then from there we will um move on to newfoundland but anyway nova scotia we went over halifax i'm pretty sure i kept that in the sightseeing so that was pretty cool to see um, look at the map and I'll give you an idea of where we are here. Let's reset that. So we are um, entering this, whoa, turbulence. See, that's why I was staying away from all the turbulence until just now. But we're entering this right here. I'll show you if you look around back here. Um, where's that big river that we see? And there's a big river. If I zoom in, come on, it's taking its sweet time. All right, so we're, this river right here is what you're looking at. Sorry, this one. Because see that water? That's that water. So right here. Man, this turbulence is crazy. That's why I stayed over the... I mean, we're we're up, even up to 4,600 feet. And it's nuts. But that's why I was over the water until just now. Because this is what I've been dealing with every time I'm over land. The plane is just nuts. So um, I'm actually looking forward to the open water part of the trip. Which will be in the next video. But anyway, let's fight with the turbulence. We're aiming for this right here. See that? right there after that open space that is aiming for right here and then we're just going to go along the coast of cape breton island which is this whole thing here so we're kind of working our way over it's so turbulent this is nuts so this water here is this water here so we're working our way across this just a little shortcut just to save like 20 minutes because if we go around you know, we'll be too far south. So we're just fighting this, and it's really a fight right now to get over here to Cape Breton. Man, that's a lot of a lot of explanation of what's going on. Um, so anyway, I want to get us over this, and then I'll jump back in with the nav log regarding Cape Breton. The next thing... Whoops, wrong preset. <laughs> I think checkpoint 7. Here we go. Eastern edge of Cape Breton Island. That's what this is right here. Lindbergh noted courses taking Lindbergh away from the edge of the storm. So it talks about storms up here. But we have no storms. We just have the same exact weather this entire time. Now, is it because every time I rejoin or continue or restart the activity, the time starts over? Remember we talked about that, I don't know how long ago, probably a couple days ago for me, but earlier in this video maybe, how the time starts over, right? Every time. So the question is these storms are we missing them because the time starts over or maybe there aren't any storms programmed i don't know the other question is is it going to get dark for us because in the um nav log he talks about further down which will back to the next video but he talks about being dark overnight blah 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 and then dread and tiredness but is it going to be dark for us ever is time moving forward is the only way to see darkness to start this and run this straight through for 33 hours? We'll find out. But again, that'll be the next video. Not ending this video yet, but in the next video, we'll be crossing the ocean over to Ireland. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see if it gets dark. Even if you just want to see if it gets dark, subscribe. Please. Because <laughs> I want to know with you, because this is a big undertaking. All right, so creeping in right here into view the Sactory Island Wilderness Area. Let's hop outside so we can see it. There it is. Right there. That means we're about to leave Breton Island. There's an airport over here somewhere. I never did pick up its beacon. Um, let's see. Where would that be? Oh, good. My map zooms in. For the past two hours, I couldn't zoom my map. It was driving me crazy. So it's actually using Google Maps. Well, we got some turbulence now that we're over some uh, terrain. Anyway, out here somewhere, there's an airport like right there. Right, right there. Um, okay, so he encountered a storm. We never saw a storm. Is it because every time you restart the sim to continue, the time and weather resets? Because remember, the clock inside like resets 
to like 8.30. So that could be. We never saw a storm. Maybe it's just in his log. Continue on course over open water. That's what we're doing now. Struggling to stay awake. That one should not be a problem for us. And then checkpoint 9, Newfoundland. Lindbergh noted the plane is lighter, more buoyant, estimating that 800 pounds of fuel have been burned so far. So again, I need to see how much fuel we started with. Minus 800 pounds and see if that lines up with the percentage. I was hoping to get to 75% after Newfoundland, but we're not going to, so we're going to be at 60-something. So right now, my plan is to, when we get to 50%, is to repair refuel. If it'll let me, that way when we get to year up, we're not too heavy. If I wait until we run out and then refuel, we'll be too heavy. Also, if we have more than 50% then when we land, I didn't need to repair and refuel. If we have less than 50% when we land, then we would have run out of fuel. Makes sense? I'll talk about that one open, over open water in the next video as well. So right now, what am I going to do? I'm just going to go over open water um, for like an hour and then get to Newfoundland and bring you back with me and that'll be another couple hours. I got like four hours probably to condense into the rest of this video so you're not going to get much sightseeing over open water. We've already done that but um, maybe a little bit but the main point is you'll hear my voice again when we reach Newfoundland, St. Pierre and then we'll talk about that as we go over it because we're not going to hit much of Newfoundland and then that'll be in the video. So stay, stick with me for a little bit more sightseeing, a little bit more narration. Um, another real life week condensed into a little bit for you. All right, we have land in front of us, Newfoundland. It's up there, but if you look out this window, you see a lot more over here. And that's because we're exactly where I want to be. If you pull up the VFR map, you see, it always puts you in the middle. That's how you know. If you go up here, this is what we just looked out the side window. This is what we see out the front window. So we're aiming for St. Pierre. I don't know why I said St. Charles early. There's no such thing here. <laughs> but we're going to cross right over here. That's the plan. And then once we get beyond Newfoundland, we will be on our way to Ireland. And that'll be the next video. So, anywho, um, it is the same night from the last little cut-in video. I still can't remember what I said. But anyway... Things have been really smooth. Um, we got a little off course now that I'm talking. It's only about 98 degrees because we were a little bit too far to the north. Our altitude is going between 4,700 and 5,700. I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. If I trim it one way, it goes the other, whatever. I'm just letting it go. Um, for the most part, I don't even really need to touch the yoke when we're on course. I just need to tap it every minute or two while I do other things like watching Netflix. So, um,. But yeah, it's been pretty simple. The ocean, there's no turbulence or anything. I did have one little weird gust thing, but other than that, it's just been watching it fly. Good practice for a flight to Ireland, which will take, I don't know, 20,000 hours. But um, we'll talk about that when we get there. We do have a lot to talk about in that video, even though it's going to the next video, even though it's just going to be going over water. There's actually a lot to say. So I'm going to keep aiming for these bumps here. Um, I don't know which bumps exactly we're looking at. I hope it's this area. If I'm off a little bit and we're a little bit farther south, it doesn't really matter. But um, that is the plan. There's been no weather at all and no change in time at all. So I don't know if we're going to get the weather he writes about. I don't know if we're going to get change in time that he writes about. I just know that I'm flying along and heading to Newfoundland and I'll see you when we get there.
Alrighty, just a little update. I know I didn't give you that whole bunch of sightseeing, but it's like an hour and a half later for me in real life, and we just finally cleared that peninsula. It was a long, long, bumpy flight. It sent us up to like 6,100 feet. Now we're down to 5,800 feet. Um, yeah, it's. I love this. This is really fun, but it's just a lot of sit here watching YouTube and stuff, which I normally wouldn't do, but it's fun. Um, why is it shaking weird? See how it's shaking weird? Anyway, but that's the peninsula. And by peninsula, I mean this big old peninsula of Newfoundland, right? So here's the... Um, I've already for St. Pierre, and then here's Newfoundland up here, this huge thing, right? But we just cover this peninsula. So now we're right here in this bay... I'm hoping we can see this airport just because it'd be fun to see that city and everything. So we need to aim like, I think you can see it actually right there, I think. Anyway, that's what I'm aiming for, between this, which is this, and that, which I think is the airport. We're aiming for that, and then we'll come across, it's going to be another bumpy ride. But if we can get to this bay and check out that airport and city, that would be fun. And then we're on our way to Ireland. So... What is this? Another one, two, three hours for me, real time minimum, I think. Alright, I know in the previous cut I said I was going to not talk to you till we were past Newfoundland, but I want to show you something very interesting. So, it's a new day. I just started, or new night, a different day. I just started the sim back up, loaded the activity, and first of all, I was at 5,000 feet when I left a couple days ago in real life, and today, it started me at like 900 feet. I've come up a thousand. I'm still trying to regain full control and trim here to get us to pack up to 5,000 feet. But what's crazier is where they put us. So, see this thing sticking out here? If you look at the VFR map, that's this thing right here sticking out, right? Like the uvula in the back of your throat, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but that's what it looks like, right? That's where we are. This is where we're crossing. But when I close the sim, the other day, we were crossing this airport. Um, the previous cut of the video, the sightseeing you saw was this peninsula. Remember, I flew up the peninsula, and you saw that for yourself. And then I cut over here, I went over here, and I was about to start recording this area, but I'm like, you know what, I'm tired, I'll do a different day. I reloaded the sim, and it put us over here. So, I'm very thankful that you don't have to do this in one go, and you can actually take your time and go back to it. But it's just weird. It put us like 45 minutes back. And I saw the save icon. That's why I decided to stop right here. Because I saw the save icon. So I don't know why I put us back here. But anyway, so we're just going to fly across. I don't know how we're going to do this now. I guess we're just going to follow this here. Which will be this here. And just cut across this. Okay, I'm jumping back in already. Because I have something interesting. When I looked at the nav log and he reached Newfoundland. Um, it said he had used 800 pounds of fuel, which is 30% of the 2750 that he started with. So reaching Newfoundland, he was at 70%. And when we reached Newfoundland yesterday, before I had to redo this section that we're doing right now, we were at 70%. So our fuel is exactly how he noted it in real life. So... Maybe we won't need to repair and refuel over the ocean. We'll have to see how that goes. I just wanted to bring that up quick because I looked it up. Because, yeah, here's the peninsula that we came across yesterday. And we were over there. See that open spot of water? Peninsula, boom, we were right there. And now we have to redo this part. But So that's interesting, isn't it? Um, that our fuel was exactly the same as what his real life was. So, I don't know. I still don't trust that we'll have enough fuel, but maybe I'll hold off on refueling if we even can. We might not even be able to. Well, we're just about done covering Newfoundland. And there's Bell Island right here with Wabana. There's an airport there. We're not going to land at it. We're going to try to see from flyover. And then there's a, a hotel and inn, the Rose Castle in here and then st john's there's the airport right there that's the big city we're going to go over we're kind of to the south of the island just because they wanted to um 
Look at a few things from outside. There we are staring down the runway for St. John's, which we're not going to land at. We're going to fly over. And then after the shore here, it's all open water into Ireland, which will be the next video from Newfoundland to Ireland condensed into one video for you. So look forward to that. Like and subscribe so you know when that goes live. But for right now, approaching Belle Island and St. John's, this video that you just watched was made up of 29 clips that I spliced together and condensed for you. Um, overall, when we get to the shoreline, we are going to be over 12 hours real life time on this trip so far. Um, that's a third of the predicted flight time, and we've used a third of our fuel. Um, I do not think we have enough fuel to make the whole trip. As I've said before, if we do try to repair and refuel, we can't wait too long or else we'll be too heavy to land nicely. So I will have to decide before Ireland, I think, if we're going to repair and refuel. Um, if we even can. If we can't repair and refuel, we're screwed. Because if we crash from running out of fuel, it'll let you start from the last point, but we'll just repeatedly run out of fuel. So hopefully we can... Um, this is going to be suspenseful for us all because I'm not even going to try it until we're closer to Ireland. But anywho, we got up to 6,700 feet with the um, turbulence behind us. I'm just, I just, I'm keeping the trim where it is and just letting it bob up and down. It's the trim is settled in for 5,000 feet. Okay, you trim for speed, but the speed that we're trimmed for comes out to be 5,000 feet over the ocean. Um, so we'll see. I might. And I might actually go up to the base of the clouds over the ocean just because I'll be able to see land that much sooner. If we're down to 1,000 feet, you don't see land until you're pretty much on it. But if you go up to 4,000 or higher, then you get to see land. Um, but anyway, I know you're all looking forward to how I'm going to put the next video together, flying over the ocean for like 14 hours. <laughs> so make sure you stick around for that. I'm enjoying the view here kind of hard to see from in the plane, but um, I'm looking for this castle in. I don't see it. It's supposed to be right here. Maybe if we were lower to the ground, we'd see it. And there's Kelly's Island. And how do I know? Because I have Google Maps up next to me. I used to always fly with Google Maps next to me, and then I stopped for some reason as the VFR map here gets better. Well, oh, there's the other airport right there for Obana. Um, that's kind of cool. The Charlie Charlie Victor 4. Well, it's under the brace now. Anyway, but now that I'm recording more and more of a screen record, I'm able to have things like my map and stuff on my other screen because I can click out of the sim and do things and not corrupt my recording. Whoops, we got, we're drifting to the south. We better. We're supposed to go over St. John's Airport. Um, then we'll be on our right heading for the ocean portion. I used to record where you hook it to bandy cam because it performs better but if you accidentally click outside of your target application in this case a flight sim it corrupts your video and it doesn't work there's a fix software that bandy cam has that does work sometimes but better if you don't have to do it and there's the castle in right there so now that i record with the screen i lose more frames per second like when you hook it, you lose 0 frames per second. When you record with your screen, you lose like 5 frames per second. But now that we're always at 120, pretty much pegged, it doesn't matter anymore. So I've been doing um, screen recording. Okay, there we go. There's St. John's over here. The St. John's area, the airport is north of the city. So there's St. John's, the city. Windsor Lake, St. John's Airport. And then the Atlantic ocean oh there's the thing rendered in we can actually use this camera now right we can use the drone camera now because i learned how to control the airplane while using the drone if you missed that part of the video you hit c to switch between camera control like this and c again to go back to airplane control i cannot believe it took me over two years of flights of this sim to know that <laughs> and hundreds of videos and no one commented but that's okay so anyway um yeah, so as soon as we get out to the shore of here, we'll wrap up the video, but we got a little bit more to do um, before we get there. Another 20 minutes probably or so. 
I think let's um, reset this camera, hop inside and do some outside shots again as we work our way to the shore. Um, this has been awesome. It does not feel like 12 hours so far. Um, I've been doing one or two hours, maybe two and a half hours, most nights late at night. And then you just come back to the sim later and I'll let you continue, which is awesome. So, I mean, I mean, I was flying a couple hours a night, not every night, but a um, couple hours, some nights anyway. So just to do it like this, it's just that you're doing the same plane every time, but it's not that laborious. Now this ocean portion um, is going to be, I think, I calculated 12 to 17 hours, maybe more than that just for the ocean um so that'll be interesting this trip let's just kind of make me nauseous here so that'll be interesting because it'll just be keeping the plane trimmed and just bumping the yoke to do the headings but we'll talk about all that in the next video i'm not going to talk about that now we actually do have a lot to talk about in the next video even though it's gonna be ocean for 14 hours um it'll probably be a short video because i'm not going to do 45 minutes of sightseeing of the ocean but we do have a lot to talk about so Again, stay tuned for that. There's St. John's. Holy cow, the turbulence. Why are we getting turbulence? Oh, we're going over the tip of the island. That's why. And um, the biggest turbulence is usually along the shore, I've noticed. And then if there's train changes, like a hill or mountain. Um, but anyway, where are we at? 6,000 feet. Coming up on 7,000 feet? Really? Yeah, blew us up, see? Yeah, so once we get over the ocean, the way I have it trimmed, it's going to slowly work its way back down to like 5,000 feet, because that's the altitude that matches the speed I'm trimmed for, so. But man, this turbulence is just killing me here. There's this really cool resort here I wanted to show you, but it's behind the wheels, so we gotta take out this camera view. Let's go like this. There it is. That looks really cool. I bet that's somewhere. Well, it's, I, it's yeah, it's called Portugal Cove. I just happened to glance over at the Google Map thing. Portugal Cove. I wonder what's there if I click out of the sim and don't crash my video. That's awesome. What's there? Um, landing Seafood House is right here by the dock. Pico's Ridge Path just went underneath us. Whoops. I'm not zooming. I'm zooming the sim while I zoom the map because I didn't click out of the sim first. Otherwise, um, let's see. Other side of the... Uh, what you would call it here airport up here is called Lodgy Bay Middle Cove Outer Cove and there's Middle Cove Beach right here I see there's that thing sticking out it goes in it comes out it goes in here's Torby so there's a beach right in here somewhere so that's fun let's reset our views here as we prepare to leave the shore oh my gosh I'm nervous because I don't want to run the fuel and I'm nervous that um, I'm going to end up like not in Ireland <laughs> but it should be okay because again when you pull up this map it puts you in the middle so you can just zoom out and if I'm way off track as Ireland comes into view then I can adjust well there's only open ocean ahead and um we're still climbing, aren't we? Yeah, we're still climbing. And over here is that beach I was talking about right there. Um, look at the little lakes. Little geological things like that. And let's look at St. John's. As we leave the North American continent, heading towards the European continent, trying to figure out why these things are blinking like that that's interesting and there's like a mine there or something is that a mine whoops let's zoom out of there click out of that it is not a mine it is called wait a second it's not even supposed to look like that hang on what's going on what is that thing it does not look like that in real life so here's the right oh yeah, here it is what is it it is a mine it's not labeled though it's Pig Farm Road leads up to it, though. <laughs> I can tell you that. This right here is called Pig Farm Road. Anyway, I gotta do this more where I have the map open when I'm 
flying around VFR. I really should do that more, shouldn't I? And if you're wondering what this big road is called, it goes all the way around, and that is called, my friends, it is called... Well, it has different names as it goes around. Porch Cove Highway is this section here. And then it's Porch Cove Highway for a lot of it, and then it joins a few other roads. So there we go. Alrighty. Um, let's begin to wrap this thing up as I totally lose it with all this um, turbulence. We want to be over here. We want to be going 94 to 88 degrees. Whoa, the turbulence took that away from me like a kite. Anyway, a third of the way done in terms of, well, core, between a quarter and a third of the way done. Um, a third of the fuel used, so I don't think we have enough. But anyway, I'm going to sign off for this video. Don't know how long it is edited down, but it was, what, eight hours of flying in the making for me, I think and 27 clips or so to make this video so hopefully you liked it and subscribe leave a like so people know we're doing this trip and in the next video we'll pick up over the ocean right from here basically basically right from here wherever the sim starts me i guess and um yeah stay tuned for part four i'll see you then